Hello viewers, this is Wagada Ronald taking you through today's tutorial on all level physics. And in this video, I'm going to share with you the solutions to all level physics for UNEB 2019 and particularly question 4 of paper 2. So, where necessary, you can use those constants, and these are the very questions I left in the previous video. So, today I believe that you have already work them out and ready to check your progress so let's get started we shall start with part a part question for part a it says that define wavelength of a water wave and there is one mark then Roman part b the figure 2 shows the position of crests of ripple tank so this is the figure Roman 1 determine the wavelength of the ripples that is one mark and Roman 2 if the frequency of the ripple is 15 hertz calculate the velocity of the ripple that is 2 marks so let's start with part A so part A we shall say that the wavelength of a water wave is the distance between two successive crests or troughs in a water wave so that is the definition for a wavelength and now we shall go to part b part b they wanted us to determine the wavelength of the ripples remember we said wavelength is the distance between two successive crests now these are the crests this is a crest and this is a crest so what we shall do the distance between these two cre successive crests is what we call wavelength therefore from here tier is two centimeters four minus two will give you two therefore the wavelength is two centimeters so you come here and say that the wavelength is equal to two centimeters but you have to change it to si units by dividing by a hundred so when you say two divided by a hundred you'll come up with 0 0.02 meters and that is what they wanted in roman one Roman 2 says if the frequency of the ripples is 15 hertz calculate the velocity of the ripple so we know the frequency and we know the wavelength so we shall come and say the velocity is equal to frequency times wavelength so frequency is 15 wavelength is 0 0.02 when we apply the 2 we'll come up with 0 0.3 meters per second so basically that's what they wanted now let's see how max can be awarded so correct definition that is one mark and you are converting to meters that is also one mark and here a half a mark for the formula half a mark for the substitution and mark half a mark for the correct magnitude of the answer another half a mark for correct si unit so that's how the two marks could come about in roman 2 So now we shall go to part C. Part C says describe an experiment to measure the velocity of sound in air. So we are going to So now we shall go to part C. Part C says that describe an experiment to measure the velocity of sound in air. So there are two experiments that can be used to measure the velocity of sound in air and we are going to look at both of them but let us start with the, the experiment whereby you use resonance, the idea of resonance. So in this experiment what you do, a glass tube which can be drained from the bottom is filled with water. So basically this is the glass tube and you can see at the bottom there is a tap whereby when you open it the water can flow out so the it means that this glass tube can be drained from the bottom next step is that a sounding tuning fork of frequency f is brought to the mouth of the tube so this is a tuning fork of a sorry, of a known frequency brought to the and this is the mouth of the glass tube. 
Now this level of water initially it is full because they say that this glass tube is filled with water. So initially this level is at the very top of this glass tube. Water is now slowly drained until a loud sound is heard. So what you do, you open this tap slowly so that water starts flowing out and 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 as you as it flows out you mark the sound of this tuning fork which is hard so when the sound is loudest that's you close this tap so the tap is closed and the length of the air column L1 is measured so the length of this air column from the top to where the water level is you measure it and let it be L1 for that case So a tuning fork is again sounded at the mouth of the tube and the water is further drained further until a loud sound is heard again. So you call, you are after marking that length, you again open this tap and you say that water can flow out and as it flows out you concentrate on the sound heard. When it is loudest you have to close the tap again. So the tap is closed and the length of the air column L2 measured. After measuring it, the velocity V of sound in air can now be calculated from the formula that V is equal to 2 times F in bracket multiplied by open brackets L2 minus L1. So remember you have already calculated L2, you already calculated L1 and F is already known because the tuning fork used is of a certain known frequency so when you use this formula you'll be able to calculate the speed of sound in air now best let's see how mass can be awarded so first mark is for that step whereby you the glass tube which can be drained at the bottom is filled with water and next mark is for you to use the sounding fork of known frequency next is to slowly drain the water until loud loud sound is heard when it is hard, you measure that length and that is also another half a mark. Next is to drain the water again until another loud sound is heard. Another mark is for you to measure that length. And lastly, quoting the correct formula from which the velocity of sound in air can be got. So basically that's how the four marks could be got using this experiment. Now let's see the second experiment that can be used. The second experiment is whereby you use the echo method. In this method you know that you have to remember that the speed of sound in air can be found by measuring the time taken for sound to travel to a wall of a building and back. So basically this is the knowledge on which this method revolves. Let's see. So first of all, a person stands at a distance d meters from the high wall and claps to wooden blocks while listening to the echo. So this is the person, his, and this is the high wall. Now this person stands at a distance d from the high wall and claps to wooden blocks. Having obtained some idea of the time interval he continues to clap so the clapping is adjusted until each clap coincides with the echo of the one before and the time interval of the two successive claps is then equal to the time taken for sound to travel twice the distance between the person and the wall. So this person continues to clapping such that the, each clap coincides with this equal.
So when that is done, the number of clap stroke equals are counted and timed. Now suppose n is the number of claps made in t seconds. What does that mean? It means that the time interval for one equal will be equal to t over n. And that means that the speed of sound in air will be equal to the distance traveled by one equal divided by the time taken by one equal by one equal. Therefore, distance is 2D and the time is T over N. So, 2D divided by T over N, you come up with 2DN over T. And basically, that's how you can get the speed of sound in air. Now, let's see how marks can be awarded. So, one is to measure that distance D from the high wall to the person. And also, the clap, he has to clap to then the source of sound also is also given a mark. And when the claps coincide, you also get another mark. And so the number of claps being counted, you also get another mark. And the time taken for those number of claps is also given a mark. Then the time taken, calculating the time taken for one interval is another mark. And lastly, the form, correct formula for speed of sound in air, that is a full mark. So basically, that's how the four marks to be awarded, and any one experiment will give you the four marks. So remember, don't write the both experiments, only choose one which seems easier for you. Now we shall go to part D. Part D says that explain why it is very difficult to hear someone speaking clearly in a large hall which has no soft lining on the walls and no cushioned chairs and that is for max so first of all one can hear clearly when the distance between the original sound and the echo is short but if the time is long the sound appears prolonged so not those words the sound appears prolonged hence difficulty in hearing so what does that mean it means that soft materials like cushions and walls with soft lining help in absorbing some of the sound thus reducing the conduct of multiple reflections which bring about confused sound so this makes it difficult to clearly hear someone speaking so when there are no these line soft linings and the chairs are not cushioned it means that this confused sound makes it difficult for someone to hear you when you speak so there is also another alternative approach and this one says that walls without soft linings and with non cushioned chairs are good reflectors of sound. So what does that mean? It means that when sound is made in a large hole, the original sound is strongly and repeatedly reflected, producing prolonged sound. So what does that mean? When the sound is prolonged, it means that the echo and the original sound overlap, producing confused sound. And that confused sound makes, you, makes it difficult to hear someone clearly when he speaks. So basically, that's what the explanation they wanted. And let's see how marks can be awarded. So mark was awarded for this word, prolonged sound. So also this one also a mark, this one also a mark, multiple reflections and confused sound also a mark. For this alternative part, the word good reflectors has to be seen and also these repeated reflections has to be seen, prolonged sound has to be seen and confused sound has to be seen. So basically that's how the formats could be got. So any one of the explanation is okay, but don't write both. Now we shall go to part E and part F. Part E says that state 
two factors which affect the speed of sound that is to max and part f says distinguish between pitch and loudness of sound so we shall start with part e which says that state two factors which affect the speed of sound remember they told us to state so one is temperature another one is wind direction another one is the density of the medium and humidity of air now we shall go to part f where they want us to distinguish between pitch and loudness of sound that one can be distinguishing them in terms of their definition whereby you say pitch is the measure of how high or low a given sound note is while loudness refers to the sensation of the amount of sound energy entering the human ear per second so that is one way of distinguishing the two another one could be distinguishing them in terms of the factors on which they depend for example shall say pitch depends mainly on the frequency of the source while loudness depends mainly on the amplitude of the source so any of the two will be okay now let's see how marks can be awarded so for part e remember they told us to state so what we do the first two are the ones which are marked for part b you are distinguishing so pitch and loudness each is one one mark if you use this alternative also pitch and loudness is one one mark and basically that's how the two marks could be got but remember you choose one and not both so i believe you have already checked your progress and made corrections when necessary and what i'm going to do I'm going to leave you with another question which is of essay type for you to try out. So that brings us to the end of this tutorial and what I can remind you is that the solutions to the assignment I've left will be available in the next video. So if you have not yet subscribed, please click on that subscribe button below this video such so that you can receive updates when I release the video with these solutions so that you can check your progress. Otherwise, if you know of any student who is not yet in this platform, you can share this link with them via your social media platforms like facebook whatsapp and others so that we all excel as a family